It's only Wednesday, but we just can't wait any longer. We're here to tell you exactly what's going to happen in Georgia-Auburn on Saturday at Sanford Stadium. Score predictions, betting advice, and then a whole bunch of locks from the week of college football today on the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everybody. This is Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We appreciate you guys so very much for being here. The everydayers, the first listens that give us the time of day, and your very, very busy day, Daniel. These people yeah. are out here all the time, busy, yeah. grinding. Today's episode brought to you by GameTime, GameTime.co. More on them in a second. We appreciate Game Time, the only place where we get our tickets. Daniel mentioned it. Uh, and by the way, hold on. Just there we go. Now, yeah, now, now we're who we are. Now we're people now were, were so confused. Uh, well, somebody the everydayers confused. thought they had maybe had a seizure. Like no. they, they had a stroke. If you're, and if you're not like, on the YouTube they, side, we just flipped spots. Yeah, I'm Clint. He is Daniel. Together we are locked on Bulldogs. Today we are talking, as Daniel said in the open, we're talking every single important factor for this game against Auburn. Tomorrow's episode, we're going to be back for a very special crossover episode with one Zachary, who's mm. locked on Auburn. Zach's going to be with us. You know gonna Zach. Be, oh, you, you know Zach. You Jordan all know Zach. Fans. You know him. Locked you on love people him. know him. He's going to be over here talking. Wait to talk to him about Peyton Thorne. I, I'm just gonna. I can't wait for this for the 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 seats to be reversed. Yeah. But this time, when he asked me last time, y'all really think Stetson Bennett's gonna walk in and beat us? And I said, yeah, yeah, I do. And I got laughed off the show. We're gonna say you really think Peyton Thorne's gonna walk in and beat us? And he's gonna say, no, no I do not. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. All right. Um, so we know that Georgia's gonna yeah. win this game. We've talked we about that, Clint. We broke down offense, defense, matchups on yesterday's episode. If you haven't checked it out, go back and listen. Go back and watch it on the YouTube. Um, yesterday's episode, we talked about all those matchups. We talked about Auburn's ridiculous propensity to turn the ball over this year, like breaking records in terms of the rate at which they're turning the ball over. We talked also about um, Georgia's offense matched up against yeah. Auburn's defense. We talked about Jarquez Hunter, Auburn's best player, and why they refused to give him the football. All those it's things notwithstanding. Georgia Auburn, the Deep South's oldest rivalry. Come on. It's a fun game every year. Yeah. They come to Sanford Stadium. It's a 24 and a half point spread. Now people don't care about betting. I get who listen to the show. Some of you do, some of you don't. All I'm trying to say is that's that is a bunch of people whose job it is to set lines for these games, make educated predictions about these games, thereby not lose a lot of money. They think this is going to be an absolute blowout. They think it's going to be a route from start to finish. 24 and a half points. I saw the over under somewhere in the neighborhood. It was in the 50s, I believe. Uh, Clint, I'm trying to let me pull it. Let me pull it back up. It's 52 and a half on FanDuel Sportsbook, our partner um, there. And so I'm going to ask you first, do you have a lock in this game? Do you have something that you feel absolutely strongly about? And then as you give that answer, just go ahead and parlay that into how do you feel like this game's going to go? And what do you feel like the score is going to be? Yeah, I, I told you on previous week's episode. Sure. Take whatever points Vegas wants to give and you just hand them to the Tiger Eagle Plainsman. You say you can carry these all game long. I don't care. I'm laying the points, Daniel. I lay them. I'm laying the points. Here's 24 why. 24 and one half points. He's just going to lay them. I'm I'm not batting an eyelash to this, Daniel. Good night. You remember, Daniel, okay, when Georgia got their absolute backside handed to them by Bama last time. And then standing in front of them was a Seminole team that said, Oh Lord. we belong in the college football playoff. And, and then your program disintegrated. This just, literally just Thanos like. And I'm you were gone. Saying the chronological events of what happened. I think this is another of those type games. Daniel, Georgia had some demons to beat out 
and mm-hmm. they went ahead and took it out on the Seminoles. I think this same time, Auburn is going to be the the scapegoat for all the frustration. But it's not just frustration. It's Georgia belongs with Alabama. Georgia belongs in the top four teams. Georgia belongs in a high-octane offense with a killer defense that can go ahead and bow up when it needs to, and not just when it needs to, but when it has its head on straight and knows its assignments, and the offense under Carson Beck can be explosive. Auburn cannot stop either of those two things. They mm-hmm. don't have a remedy for it. So 24 mm-hmm. points, that's a set, Daniel, That's a touchdown a quarter. If you're telling me that Georgia will, by possession and efficiency, come away each quarter with a touchdown better than Auburn, I'll take that every time. I have no problem. So I see this game going something to the akin of 40, 10, 40, 13, 47, somewhere in that category. I think we hit 40. I think we exact, and I don't think Bobo knows how to let off the gas, and Kirby doesn't know how to let off a blitz against Peyton Thorne, or uh, uh, um, against Thorne, who, who by the way, is, is is not good at throwing the football. We've already talked about that. So I think yeah. blitzing is going to be the answer. 40 to 10 is my official prediction. I think there's a lot of ways that the score could go. I think this game could be 48 to 7. Like, I think it could be an absolute an absolute just like just as you described it absolute an- annihilation i also think this game could be 20 to 10 clint like i think there's a there's a route in which that's the score that we end up with um and so i have a hard time taking a taking a side on the spread I have a hard time taking a side on the over under, but I am going to lock something up in this game because there is one thing that I feel the most confident about. Give it to me. And that is Georgia defense got it handed to them last week. They did by Alabama. Yeah. Give me the Auburn team total under 14. Clint. There it is. Yep. Under 14 points for the Auburn Tiger Eagle Plainsman. Um, I think this Georgia defense is going to have a day. Now, maybe it's a bit of a rock fight, a bit of a low scoring game. Again, 21 7. You know, like okay, that, sure. I could see that. And in that case, you know, the spread wouldn't hit. Nope. Maybe Georgia comes out and absolutely just cooks on offense. And this game gets out of hand and gets out of hand quickly. 45 to 10 in which case I can't even take the under because nope. Georgia might hurt me take trying to take the under um give me the Auburn team total under though because that's the side I feel the most confident in this Georgia defense bouncing back Kirby said it they got out coached last week they got out schemed they got out game planned they made their adjustments and this Georgia defense reminded us in the second half that they played they played they they belong. They played quite well yeah. in that second half. Yes, Ryan Williams is some sort of a god. Like I'm just fully I, convinced of this. Yeah. So I'm not worried about catches like that and all those plays. I'm not putting that on Julian Humphrey. I'm not putting on no. that on that Georgia defense. No. I liked what I saw from them in the second half. They're not going to get out coached and out schemed no. in this no, game. And so, um, yeah, give me the Auburn team total. Official score prediction, as I said, I don't really know how this game is going to go. My official score prediction is going to be something to the tune of 28 to 6. That's where I'm going to go with this. Um, I so I think it'll be right there in that line. I think it'll be a comfortable win. Maybe not what feels like a blowout win, but a comfortable win. Controlled win. On Saturday. That's right. A controlled burn. That's what we like. Nothing, nothing wild like. and out of hand. Uh, no. We've got more that we're going to get to um, games from all across college football. Our favorite bets, our favorite picks for the weekend. But first, want to let you know about these. We love game time. You should love game time too. Gametime.co. Get over there right now. All these locks we're giving you, all these point spreads that we just mentioned, Georgia or the under that Daniel is mm-hmm. taking for Auburn team total. The you can go buy a ticket and watch it. You. Just just go over to gametime.co and go ahead and bet these lines. They're fantastic. Game yeah, you uh, picks- you go to game time and then you would uh-huh. that's how you would get your tickets to go to the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I'm yes. Saying. Yeah. 
Yes, I, I hear what you're saying. You you get there at the game, whatever it is, we have all in pricing for this, these games. Mm-hmm. Every single thing you're looking at, every single thing you're talking about is in the app or the, the website is right there for you. It's all mm-hmm. in pricing. You have to have turn it on, but every single thing, taxes, fees, all of that rolled into Why one. You don't you have wanna, to guess until the very end. You don't have to do the end. math. No. Math is hard. Don't do it's it. It's hard. Don't do it. Let it do it for you. We love it because there's curated deals, there's super deals, and there's view from the seats, which we really, really love. Lowest price guarantee, guarantee, and it has a ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in ticket industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College, twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Daniel, let's go through the rest of the slate of games. Do you have any early? We're getting this out on Wednesday, so people have some time because the people Thursday and the Friday kicks are there. But do you have any Thursday, Friday kicks? Let's get those out of the way first, if you do. I I do not this week. I have not had a week. Friday night play every week of this year, but I do not have one this week. I'm sticking to Saturday. You got it, any? In, interesting one for me, Daniel. Okay. Interesting one. I, I don't have people. a lock, but a lean. I'm very curious. The line in the the Syracuse UNLV game sure. has been wild. It started off four and a half. The Rebels getting or giving four and a half being favored, and now it's up to seven. It's been bet up to seven, Daniel. I, I'm leaning cues on that one, but I can't take it because I don't. I, I can't make sense of it. It stinks. It reeks. So I'm staying away from it. Okay, let's get you to Saturday. Me, by the way, this is just not. This is, our listeners don't care about this. Did you, you see, so the UNLV quarterback obviously makes all these yeah. headlines with the NIL stuff, yeah. right? He but, leaves. But then what happened? But then, <laughs> but then what had happened was, but before the game last week, yeah. the, the team captain starting middle linebacker, senior middle linebacker, it, all the stuff breaks. Before the game. He just tweets out a picture of the the new starting quarterback. Yeah. With the with the with the caption it's about time. And that's, that's it. it. That's all. I, that was telling to me. Well, I said, "Okay, well there might be some more." And to... that's why I'm staying away from this four and a half up yeah. to 7 because he balled out. Uh anyway, yes. He did. Okay, let's get yeah. to Saturday action. Daniel, what's the first one you have for us on the docket? Um, I'm not going to do these necessarily in order okay. that I like them or, but I, I am just going to, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you some principles, right? Yes. Syracuse. I am. I'm doing pretty well this year. All mm-hmm. right. I'm getting somehow I'm getting trolled for winning as if like, but it's fine. It doesn't whatever. matter to just, me. Whatever. Stanford should have covered for me last week. Here we go. Now, that game was closer than... Okay, first of all, they lost by 24 points. I had them plus 21 and a half. So, they almost Not did cover for me. Right. They almost did cover for me. Yeah. And um, they turned it over inside the red zone twice in that game. Okay, Stanford moved the ball, especially early against Clemson. That's what I thought would happen. Yep. That's what did happen. I knew they wouldn't be competitive in the game. Now, Stanford's back home. They've been on the East Coast a lot. Yeah, but now we're welcoming an East Coast team to Palo Alto, Virginia Tech, coming off of an absolute gut punch last Friday night. Clint, have you ever seen a team lose a game and then win a game and then lose a game again without any plays in between? Like, the ending of that Miami Virginia Tech game was maybe the wildest thing I've ever seen in college football last week. Virginia Tech absolutely got has to be emotionally slaughtered. Now you travel all the way across the country. I know you played well on Friday night against Miami in Coral Gables. But you're going to lay eight and a half points against Stanford? Give me Stanford and the points at home. I'm going to take them again. I'm going to take Stanford and the yeah. points. They burned me last week, but I think they're going to cover this number at home. I wouldn't mind sprinkling a little bit on the money line. I think Stanford might win this game. Uh, this is my lock as well. We are in unison on this. I saw this line. They're getting points. VTech has to come on over 
everything you just described, this Stanford team is uh they're Daniel, they're good. They they're okay. Yeah, they're, they're an okay team. They're fine. They have competent defense, they have competent offense. That coach is coaching them up well. I like that as well. Lock it up for me as well. Daniel, I'm going to stay early slate. There's okay. a couple of, of interesting games. Big of noon nooners? To me. Some big noon nooners. Okay, I know. got nothing in the noon window, so talk to me. I'd like to make some wagers here. Okay. He, here's something that I think... I, look, this is this is an interesting one for me. I'm, I'm just pointing out a couple before I get to my... Boston College is going to Virginia. Virginia, surprisingly okay this year. Three sure. and one. Um, line has been bet down to one. Virginia is a one-point favorite at home against Boston College. Quarterback situation last week hurt. Boston College not great. That was interesting to me. We'll see what happens with that. I, who knows what's going to happen? I, I would lean Boston College. I think they're still a good team with that. Um, lean lean that way. Okay. Okay. The one that I'm I'm really focused on. And this is this is called principal betting again, Daniel. You, yep. you said principal betting. Here's something that I know. the The Army Navy game this year is going to be absolutely raucous. I can't wait for it. I can't, can't wait. wait. Navy, you know. Plays... By the way, both those teams are in the American now. Correct. Both the teams have joined a conference. Yeah. They're in the so, American. The Army Navy game uh-huh. is a non conference game at the end of the year. That's Correct. that's part of their contract. Is like. That game is separate. It's like completely and totally doesn't count towards the conference standings, which means, and it's after the conference championship games, which means either Army or Navy might play in the American title game. And there is a possibility Clint, that, going. that Army could play Navy for the American Athletic Conference Championship and then the following week play in the Army Navy game. Correct. Golly. Correct. That would be the single greatest thing that would happen in college football. It's this wild. Year. Navy plays Air Force. Navy is a 10 point favorite. Navy is a good ball club this year, Daniel. I'm laying the points. They're on the road. Ooh, I don't care. A lot of points to lay with an option team, but it's fine. They're going to roll. Air Force is not that great. Navy is. It's been bet up to the 10, but lay the 10 points is my second lock of the week, Daniel. Speaking of laying points, my second one of the week is um, a nightcap in Fayetteville. I I don't know. Nico's already played a road game in an environment that's even tougher than this mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. and he was fine. He's fine. Like he's fine. Tennessee's Arkansas is playing great this year. Taylor Green, the quarterback, playing great. It's a great year for Arkansas. They're having they're having a good time. Tennessee's on a different level. Tennessee's not the same type of team. Josh Heupel's gonna Josh Heupel's gonna get in there and murder Sam Pittman and the Arkansas Razorbacks. I'm laying 13 and a half on the road with Tennessee, and to be honest with you, I would lay 17 on the road with Tennessee. Like I don't. I'm not scared of this line at all. Give me the balls. Lay the points on the road. Second unison we got. I saw this line and I jumped all over it. Arkansas does not scare me. We're going to come back. We're going to have difference of opinion coming this, but I I locked that up. I gave three. We're going to come back after these, give you some more locks for the rest of the weekend. But first, these. And these are, in fact, FanDuel. FanDuel FanDuel.com is the official sports book of Locked On Bulldogs, Locked On Podcasts everywhere. We know that you love them. You should love them because we love them. They're the official place. Daniel and I go to make all these bets. All these lines we're giving you right now on Mm -hmm. this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get over there right now. Got the The app pulled up right now. It's it's right there. It's on the phone. It's on the web. Whatever you need, FanDuel is there for you. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats right live as you're betting. View live live play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And you'll get started if you lay a $5 bet. You get 200 bonus bet dollars. That's $200 in bonus bets when you place your first $5 bet, and that's guaranteed. Get over there right now. All these lines we're giving you are brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On Podcast, Locked On Bulldogs everywhere. FanDuel.com. Make every moment more. You see what's happening, guys. Clint's struggling on the locks mm-hmm. this year. Well, 
I'm having a good year. And yeah. so he says, let me come yeah. on board with some of those yeah. picks. I get it. Listen, it's, I get it. Okay, let me go. I, I am heavy favorites this week, Daniel. I don't I, oh. I gave Stanford as a dog, mm-hmm. but I'm heavy favorites. I gave out uh Navy. Um okay. here, here's how something many else. more you got, by the way. How I got two more. more. How many okay, more you got? I got two more as well. Okay. Florida State Seminoles are a very, 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 very bad yeah. team. Cool. I don't know how to describe to you the depth of Program the program that they have reached. They they have. It's it's been Thanos. It's been Purple Man all over yeah. the place. Okay. Clemson is a good team. Clemson is a is not more than a competent team. They're not they're they're a good team. And Kate Klubnik is playing well. They're on the road and they're getting uh they're giving the Seminoles 14 and a half. Seminoles are getting 14 and a half points, two touchdowns nearly for this game. I think this game could bounce back up. I think the point spread is going to be a little, little bit bigger. But Daniel, I'm not scared about this. Give me Clemson all day long. You're going to lay them. Absolutely. Give me Clemson going to Tallahassee. It's not going to be close. DJ is not great. Clearly understatement of the year on that one. But I think Clemson handles this easily, maybe 28-3, 28-7, something like that. Give me the Tigers. I don't mind that pick at all. In fact, I almost made that pick. The only thing that stopped me from making that pick, and this is not a good reason to place or not place a bet, is just in the back of my mind, I just keep hearing a little voice say, it would be hilarious. It would be. If Florida State won this game. (laughs) Like... It would be magically funny. Like, what if DJU comes out and throws for four touchdowns and Florida State wins this game? Can you imagine Clemson fans and the hysteria that they would be feeling? So, again, not a not not necessarily a prediction, but in the back of my mind, I was like, I can't I can't bet against something that would be so funny that I almost wish that it would happen. So we shall see. All right. I'm going to go. I got a couple big 10 matchups left on my card. And by big 10 matchups, I mean, big 10 versus pac 12 matchups that are actually now just big 10 matchups. First, I'm going to go to Michigan, a top 10 team who is Going to Washington, Michigan, by the way, a top 10 team coming off of a big time win. Really looks like they've righted the ship. Maybe they have their quarterback now. They're done messing around with Davis Warren, who absolutely cannot do anything but throw the ball to the other team. Maybe he wants to transfer to Auburn. And so Michigan feeling good. Yeah, they're traveling to Washington, a team that has looked. Meh. Okay. Okay. This year. Yeah. Also a little shaky this year. Yeah. So wouldn't you imagine my surprise when I looked at the line and I saw that Washington is favored they are in this game, favored. Clint. Yeah. Now, when you see something mm-hmm. that doesn't make any sense. You should get somebody's attention. What? Where? Where do you steer in that? type of environment like where should you do you turn away from it no no you don't want to do that you want to steer into the skid you understand what i'm saying That's what steer he's saying. into the line that doesn't make any sense so yeah i don't think washington's very good no so i'm gonna lay them lay the two and a half with washington at home i think the wrong team's favored in this game but that makes me think that somebody who knows more about who should be favored thinks the right team is favored in this game. And so, yeah, I'm going to lay the points with Washington. I think it might be one of those seasons for Michigan, right? Where it's just like roller. Like coaster. that might be the type of team that this Michigan team is gets shellacked by Texas. Big win over USC. Follow it up with a trip to Washington. Whoopsies. We lost to the Huskies, a team that's not going to contend for anything this year. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to lay the points with Washington against the defending national champion cheating Michigan Wolverines. Daniel, I don't hate that at all. 
Um, as a matter of fact, I really like it. I was about to make this bet. I did not go ahead and make the bet, but uh, same exact reason. I saw that and I said, this is this is sideways. Maybe somebody knows a thing that I don't necessarily know. It's very questionable. Uh, last one I'm ending with, uh, Daniel, before I before we give the people, you, you have one more pick. Right? I got one more. I got one more. Okay. It involves um, Minnesota, so stay tuned, everybody. Why? And everybody's everybody's curious about it. Take the floor, Daniel. Yes. Is this is also the game you're betting on? Take the floor, Daniel. All right. Well, USC travels to Minnesota. Yep. USC, Lincoln Riley, high powered offense, Miller Moss. You all know they can get it done. Yeah. I actually like USC. I think they're going to win this game. I think they're going to win this game easily. Yeah. That's not, I don't want any piece of that. Give me the under in this game. Under 50 and a half is the number I'm looking at right here. Minnesota's offense. Suspect. Really bad. So like bad, you know. really bad. Minnesota's defense is actually fairly decent. I think, I mean, this has got like a 40 to, to seven written all over it. Like 35 to 10 written all over it. Like I, I just, I think under 50 and a half, when you catch a Minnesota game with an over under that starts with a five, that's an automatic bet for me. Like that's just a, that's a principle that I see and I say, oh, okay, well, I'm going to be taking the under no matter what in that game because Minnesota ain't helping you out on the way to 50. Like no. they are not going to chip in for gas no. if you're trying to get to 50. No. So give me the under. Uh, here's Minnesota point totals for the season. 17, 48 against Rhode Island. Let's go ahead and move that. Okay. 14 against Iowa, 27 against Nevada, and then 24 against Nevada Minnesota. Nevada worse than Rhode Island. <laughs> um, they're not going to get to the 25 that gets no. us to that point total you're talking about. Now, conversely, USC, here's their point total so far this year. And it's it's a little interesting to me. 27 at LSU, 24 at Michigan, 48 at home against Utah State, and then 38 against Wisconsin at home. Not exactly lighting up the scoreboards, that, USC. Not I mean, one, take Utah State out at home. Wisconsin, they got up over 30, held under on the road. They're going to the road to the Midwest again. They're up in Minnesota. Um, Daniel, I, I looked at this. I think the, the spread is eight right now, eight and a half. Did it yeah. get bet up? Yeah. 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 I, I don't want that. Exactly your point. No. I laid him with USC last week. They pulled it off for me, but oh, it was a sweat. You were hating life started at nine and a half got bet down to yep. that eight 50 and a half points uh this game's gonna be 35 three um usc is not the dominant offense uh take the under i saw this after watching minnesota i bet with minnesota against iowa and i thought this i thought offense offense defense we know big yada 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 turns out uh minnesota is anemic at best on offense they don't know what they're doing they have no That's people good. to go anywhere it's depressing it's disgusting it's awful it's horrible i don't want any part of it Give me the under as well. Daniel, we are three unison picks. We must be reading the same websites or same it's juju tough. or same something. It's not great. Um, Fade the syndicate this year. That's <laughs> the that's the move, y'all. You all know what to do. You all know what um, to do. All right. He is Clint. I am Daniel. This has been the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. Remember, tomorrow, crossover episode with our boy Zach from Locked On Auburn. You will not want to miss it. We're going to ask him all of the important questions. And if you if you've got questions that you want us to ask Zach and you're still listening at this point in the podcast, send us a message over on Twitter at Dogs Podcast and we will ask him whatever it is that you want. Tune in then um, uh, and we will see you guys there. See you.